showtime. Welcome everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the Streeters. Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV Glass Studio live stream tonight. And we're here to answer your questions. All about glass or just glass in general, stained glass. Any questions you have about glass, we're here hopefully to answer your questions for you and to enlighten you on this beautiful, beautiful process we call building and fabricating stained glass windows. So if you have any questions, just put them in the chat or in the comments below and I'll read the questions to Ed and then he'll answer them. Sure. So we're live on Facebook tonight and on our RDRV on Facebook and we're about a 10 minute lag time on Facebook. Is that right, Barb? That's right, Ed. And we're on the Conway Glass Facebook page as well. Um, so we'll give everybody a chance to get here. Hi, Kat, Kat St. Jane. Hey, welcome, welcome to the RDRV. We're going to wait for some people to show up, but it's good to see everyone. We've got some people here tonight that are new. If you're new, please subscribe. We're 24 people away, 24 subscribers 24. away <laughs> from 5,000. 5,000 subscribers. Y'all, let's why don't we do this tonight while we're because <laughs> there's those of you that are lay in the bat in the wings of the RDRV channel and watch everything that's going on. Do Barb and I a favor tonight. Let's hit 5,000 while we're streaming. That'd this, be cool. That would be awesome to hit 5,000 subscribers for the RDRV channel tonight. It's only 24 left to go. Those of you that are waiting back in the wings, come on, jump on in and subscribe to the RDRV channel. Okay, AK Martinez is here. Christy Cannon is here. Uh, yeah, AK Martinez says congrats on almost 5,000. Yeah, we, we're moving right along. So, um, well, it's awesome because we thought things were cool at 100, you know. <laughs> yeah, I looked at an old video, we were all excited about 200 subscribers. So, those of you who've been with us from the very beginning, you know it's been a while coming, so yeah. we're real excited. And you know what? They, they've, you've been there from the beginning. Thank you so much for sticking with us and sharing our knowledge and your knowledge with other people. It's awesome, yeah. So Ed and I have been teaching glass for about 30 years, maybe a little bit more. And so um, how we got here on YouTube, in case you're new, is because of the pandemic. Uh, we stopped teaching classes during the pandemic. Yeah, in person, yeah. In person. So we said, hey, you know, let's, we got to give something back. Uh, let's try teaching on YouTube. Yeah, so we wanted, we did the YouTube channel so that, you are able to learn stained glass at your own pace. And when you get to a point where you have a question, just join us on Monday night or anytime during the week, you can write in your question. And as long as we get it before 6 p.m. on Sunday evening, we will air your question on Monday night at seven o'clock. So we've had a couple of good questions this week, I think, Barb. Yeah. But you know, more than anything, Barb, and I am just, uh, I am beside myself. The comments oh, yeah, of we have you all about Barb and I and about the channel and what it does and how it helps you. You know, I'm, I'm beside myself, Barb, because that that some of those words are just, you guys are way too kind, I think. But thank you very much. Art R is here. Welcome. And Gina Durson is here. So hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Um, we've got people from all over. Uh, Art R is from Allentown, PA, and um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, we can go ahead and get started with a question. Sure, Are you well, ready? No, let's Are you guys ready a for question. a question? Um, one of the questions uh, where you were teaching the stained glass class, uh, the cutting, cutting class, you had paper down on your table. And I think in a couple of videos, it's the same paper. Could you tell our viewers what that is? Yeah, sure. Actually, what I do is I uh, just my regular drawing or my pattern paper that I use for drawing my patterns uh, is right here on top of this. Now, I use a colored piece of paper uh, sometimes so that the camera will pick things up a little easier for us. Uh, like tonight, I'm using a beautiful beautiful soft purple or what I would say an amethyst paper because when we do the glass jet I want you to be able to see this tool that I'm going to show you tonight. 
So the paper that Ed uses on his table and, and for the videos and for his pattern paper, he orders it from Amazon. And it'll be on the website yeah, in, by I'm the gonna, end of the week. Yeah, I didn't have time to uh, pull that number and get it on the website. Funny, because I had just ordered it. <laughs> and uh, oddly enough, you know, I, I usually order my drawing paper. It's a it's a pretty good size roll and you can order a little bit smaller. But what is the width on that? I, I use a 48 inch paper and it is a uh, 200 feet long so we use it for a lot of different things and for pattern making it's great for pattern make because it's a heavy bond paper um it's uh i'm gonna say it's 40 pound which is awesome to draw so and it makes it easy so if you need to erase something with your pencil because it's light anyway uh it doesn't tear and that <laughs> That's the worst thing you can have done to you is your pattern tear while you're just trying to erase a line, you know. Elena is here. Hey, Elena. And James Smallridge is here. And James is from Southern Ohio. Welcome, y'all. It's good to see you. Julie Graves is here. Um, A.K. Martinez says they, that they were watching a show called Texas Bucket List, and the episode was about the German Stained Glass Museum in San Juan, Texas. Uh, have you hmm. ever heard or visited it? No, I have not. I have not. I have not. But I, you know, I have check a, it out. I have a schoolmate that lives in Houston, and uh, I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll send him a message and see if we can get him to go there and take some video. Give us a, a little update. Yeah, get us a little update. And you know what? It's funny. Oddly enough, he probably might do it for us. <laughs> Magali's here. Let's start the party. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh, hope everything's good in Florida. Hope everybody Gail. is good tonight and everyone had a wonderful weekend. Gail. Gail. Uh, okay. So, and here in the South, we're getting a little more humidity and the temperature today was 88 degrees. Water, so. Okay. I said that wrong. That was the Gelman Stained Glass Museum. I, I have a bad eye, so sometimes I'm, I don't read it right. The Gelman? Gail. G, and I may have pronounced it wrong too. G-E-L-M-A-N. Museum. So we'll. Gelman. Could be Gelman. Okay. okay. So, um, C. Sim 115, Long Island, New York. Welcome to the RDRV channel. Welcome. And if you heard us earlier, we were talking about we're almost at 5,000 subscribers. 5,000 <laughs> subscribers, y'all. So we need 24 more subscribers to get to 5,000. So help us out tonight. So if, if you haven't subscribed, yeah, it's free. <laughs> It's free. It's the That's RDRV free. channel and subscribing to our channel is free. We just need 24, y'all. I'd like to be able to uh, look at our stats tonight after we go to dinner and say, we hit 5,000, Barb. That's awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. But you know what? We can't do it without you guys. So that's yeah. awesome too. Yeah, it's great. Okay, now uh, another question that came in. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go to this one first. We had a couple of really, uh, you know, some great questions. And and do, don't forget, please type them in during the week while you're thinking about them. Uh, you know, and, and and go ahead and put them in the, in the comment box so that we can, uh, the form is right there on our website, on the RDRV. Okay. Page. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I had a question. Uh, Debbie's here. Linda's here from Port St. Lucie. Debbie wanted to know how do they subscribe? So you want to tell them? Well, I'm going to let Barbara tell them because I'm computer illiterate. However, if you'll go to the... Uh, <laughs> go ahead. You tell them, Barb. You don't know how to subscribe I've to already our channel? subscribed. Shame on channel. you, Mr. Ed. <laughs> okay, to subscribe the to the channel, you would go to the RDRV channel. So we have a little... Um, uh, but you should have a little button there that takes you right to the channel and there'll be a little thing on the corner that says subscribe and then there'll be a bell that comes up and if you ring that bell you'll get notified that's a notification give, signal for you whenever we give the um, uh send out a notice for a live stream or for a video yeah, or a new video. So, uh, yeah, you should be able to subscribe right here on the feed. Yeah, on the feed, you, it should be. A, you should be able to click on the down in the bottom right hand corner. And in the, the bottom right hand corner, and you can you subscribe. Should, you should be able to subscribe. But uh, I'd have to go on and see how it looks on your computer to tell you exactly how to get there. 
But please but take a moment, button. and and if you don't subscribe <laughs> while we're live, at least please go back and subscribe so that we can make this. Let's make this happen on a Monday night, May the second, five thousand. Yeah, yeah, isn't that fun? I dated this video simply because we're going to hit five thousand tonight. It's all because of you guys. That's right. Okay. Um, welcome, 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 everyone. It's good to see everyone. And don't forget, thumbs up for RDRV because why? The thumb is our favorite finger. Okay. Let's see here. What are we? Let's take some questions. Um, I had a question. Okay. Do you frame the stained glass first? First, and what before you build it? I don't know. Definitely do not. Do you do you make the frame before? Oh, absolutely you... not. Absolutely not. Um Sometimes the frame is pre-existing. Sometimes the frame is right; it's pre-existing. So then you would you would design and fabricate your window to fit inside that frame. Uh, most times, if you're going to frame a window, it's not going anywhere but hanging in an opening. So my suggestion is to always build the window, then solder the window. Never solder it while you're building it. That just will mess you up. But build the window solder the window, finish the window, then fabricate the frame for it and get your eye hooks in it and get that bad boy hung and call your customers. So we have a, that exact process going on this week here in the glass studio at Conway Glass. We're fabricating. We've already designed it. We're fabricating a window for our customers who have been waiting very patiently uh, for our Pelican window. And we're going to, once we get it fabricated, get it finished, we're going to be framing it and we'll have some pictures later on. Okay. Thomas Sharp is here. Welcome, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. And Dawn is here and Debbie is here. Um, Debbie has the question, how do you know what size came to use for small panels? Well, the thing about that is, is uh, I like to mix the different profiles together. But if you're doing a small panel and you don't want to copper foil it, I would, I prefer using a 532nd round H, which is just a really good size lead. If, if, if your cutting skills are up to par, you can use a cane profile that small. Uh, however, I mean, you can mix them up too. You can, uh, 3 16 is a really good neutral size for windows up to, you know, maybe, I don't know, 18 by 24 or something like that. But if you have some very intricate areas in that particular window, try and use that 532nd round H because it is really, really nice to work with. But your cutting skills have to be up here, not down here. Okay, Angela wants to know, how do you figure out how much to charge for a stained glass panel? That was the... That was a question last week, I think. And the, it's a question every week. It's a week. question every week. <laughs> you know, I can't, Barb and I can't sit here and tell you what to charge for your work because we don't know, we don't know all of the rules of business that you have. We know the rules of business for our business, but the rules of your business are maybe different. Rules of business are your overhead, your payroll. All of those things that you have, you know, your rent, your rent, your electricity and water, that's besides your payroll, that's pretty much your overhead. Now you've got insurance and all that. So you need to account for all of that stuff and then figure out what you need to charge for your windows. If you're working out of your house, you know, and, and you don't, uh, and you're doing, you're going to do shows and everything, then that would be, I think you're still in business. If you're building sun catchers and giving them to your friends, then you're doing it as a hobby, right, Barb? Yeah, I, I mean, there, if you're there making money difference. with it, it's a business. So yeah, so bone up on the on what how a business is run, run it correctly, and your your you can either do square footage price, or you can do per piece. I've never in the 36 year, 43 years we've been doing doing this, I've never charged by the piece. 
So what you just have to figure, take into consideration all of those things in, in your business and how much they cost you each month and then come up with a price to charge for your windows. So I don't know how fast you work. I don't, all of those things come into, come into play, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you're not a hobbyist. If you're making a profit, you're no longer a hobbyist. You, you are a business. Yeah, if you're charging, so for you have it, to learn business. So, yeah. you know, take an hour or two every week and read a little bit about business or hire an accountant to take care of your, take care of your money, take care of your money. And, and they will advise you what you need to do. But, but as far the as easiest thing to do is figure out how to make a profit. And, uh, right. You that know, it takes a little bit of can, math. You can charge $65 a square foot. And then you'll be paying your customers to work for it. <laughs> but, you know, and it, it, and it depends it, on know. how, how yeah. much time. Yeah, how, how, long. Much, how long? Okay, so, so imagine that you could make, let's just say you want it to make, you, you just started out and you said, wow. $10,000 a year, it sure would be nice if I could make $10,000 extra a year right. to pay my, you know, to $200 help pay bills, a week. That's all. to pay my bills. Right. So think about how many stained glass windows or stained glass sun catchers you have time to make and sell for the and amount net. up to $10,000. Don't gross it. You want to net $10,000. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. So, so it might cost it, you might be fifteen thousand dollars worth of product. The product to make ten thousand. Well, I wasn't going to even go there. Go there. Okay. No, I was just <laughs> going to say, okay, so ten thousand dollars. So maybe you have to build ten windows. If you're only charging a thousand dollars for a window, then you'd have to build ten windows a year. Which means you have to build one one every five weeks. So is that how you, do you want to price your work at a thousand dollars? So kind of go backwards, start from what you want to make and go backwards. I don't know. If that no, that's, I think that's the correct <laughs> way, Bar, because, you know, we, we struggled in the beginning to figure out what to charge, but, but our plan we had, we took and listed every, all of our overhead payroll insurances and all that stuff. And we actually came up with a square footage price, including the materials for the pro for the finished product. You gotta you gotta figure that. You know, glass is not two dollars a square foot anymore, y'all. Glasses. And you have to add in your profit. How much profit do you want? How right. much profit do you need after you pay all your bills? Right. How much profit do you need to grow your business? Do you want to grow your business? Maybe you want to be stagnant and you don't want to add yeah. new equipment things like that. Do you but want to I, do this the rest of your life? But I guarantee you it's going to come where you're going to need something. So you need that profit to grow your business. Well, so, yeah, you have to, you know, you have to, uh, and, and you not only, not only do you need to be able to charge for your work, you need to be really good at what you do to be able to charge for it. Right. So you can't, you know, a couple months ago, Barbara told me what the what the what the new 21st century word for hack is. I thought it was somebody that would beat stuff up and ruin it. But <laughs> okay, a hack is definitely not that anymore. Okay, we have uh, Angela's here. Julie is here. Ray. Dawn is here. Ray's here. Thumbs up, buddy. And uh, Gina. Uh, Thomas wanted to know our feelings about wiping a soldering iron on a wet sponge. On a sponge, okay. it has to be wet. Well, it yeah, and it but it doesn't have to be wet, wet like it's gonna. Okay. You're gonna boil spaghetti in it. What you want to do is just have a damp sponge, and you just want to go. Whoosh, whoosh, that's it. And by the time you take it from the sponge and get ready to solder it again, that temperature will have increased back to where it belongs, and you should be able to run uh, a nice what. What wiping it on the sponge does is there's any trash that pops up in the solder is going to be black, okay? And it's going to form a scale on the outside of your iron. But if you'll every, maybe every 10 minutes or so, every, you know, I don't know, every couple, seven, six or eight, 10 feet on your, if you're copper foiling, six or eight, 10 feet, just hit it with that damp sponge really quick. 
and then give it time. And remember, when you hit it with the damp sponge, if that tip goes to blue, you're running just a little bit hot, okay? You want that tip to kind of stay off of the dark blue purple into a light blue gray color. Right. I hope that helps you. <laughs> Everybody's soldering iron's a little different. And when you're working outside or inside, the room temperature that you're working in will dictate where your uh, iron controller is. And I don't recommend using any soldering iron without some sort of a controller to control the heat unless you just want to keep buying tips and irons. Okay. Um, Gina? said that she ordered a metal mesh ball um instead of the, the wet sponge yeah we've used that before yeah uh, we, we had those for our students sometimes yeah um, i just like the damp sponge actually i you don't even have to buy a sponge just use a damp paper towel fold it fold it fold a fold one paper towel like 10 times and make a nice little pad and just dampen it and that's all you need you really that's all you need i hope i've said hello to everyone um, if we haven't hello everyone hello. thanks for tuning in tonight. hi everyone it's starting to move through real quick um but uh cs sim do you rec recommend dipping the tip in flux absolutely not please please that tip should be able to be cleaned with a damp sponge and if you dip it in flux all you're doing is ruining the you're tip. Ruin that, your tip. That metal is not designed to be dipped in flux. It's designed no, to roll through it, and it's designed not to run through a lot of it. The other reason you wipe the tip off, other than to get the trash that's in your solder off, is to keep the tip clean and uh, uh, actually flush the flux off, of, off the of the tip. The flux is a corrosive, right? Oh, you better, but it's an acid. So it's a corrosive, if and you that stick tip your is, tip in there. That tip is is tin protect to protect it so yeah please yeah. don't and don't plus do the that. fumes my goodness oh my gosh i hope you haven't done that before because it don't. is a, a wild if you have done event. it just don't just, do it again <laughs> just don't do it anymore and you know it's just number it's it's a safety thing too when you dip <laughs> that tip in the flux the flux boils and puts off a gas and you know what probably a lot a lot of people don't have the correct ventilation in their studios but you oh. definitely want to make sure that you get ventilation in your studio. That was one of the questions, what we use for ventilation. Uh, we, I, we, I couldn't find that list. We but use that was a fan in, uh, that uh, blows to the outside and pulls air in, and it uh, changes 36,000 cubic feet of air per minute Once we when we turn it on and we're soldering and everything. But we don't have a whole lot of soldering like it, it's not copper foil we don't do a lot know, of copper foil so yeah constant soldering so. yeah otherwise if i'm doing lead work i usually just turn the ceiling fan on open away the from the table and draw the air out. and open the door and draw the tape draw the draw the table out of the room <laughs> but no we want to draw the fumes out yeah. i tell you you're getting too many fumes at the tip of your tongue starts to tingle taste. or burn or you okay? taste it or you taste it you don't do it. it you you want to make sure yeah if you can taste the flux in your tip of your tongue uh, get some ventilation going please yeah. but not enough to cool your soldering iron down there's a fine <laughs> line everybody between getting toxic and being safe yeah okay so that was a good question though i mean it, if you think about it but your flux, y'all, flux is is a corrosive, and uh, you definitely don't want to breathe it or swallow it or anything else. But however, we're <laughs> talking about fluxes, Ruby flux is on the website. Yeah, that's you the need flux to order we it. prefer here at Conway Glass, and it's on the shopping page on the website, and you get a two pint two one pint bottles for about $14 and it's awesome. That's a good, that is really a good price for the Ruby Flux. And you'll find if you ever start using Ruby Flux, Barb, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. No, you're fine. If you ever start you're using the, Ruby Flux, maestro. you'll I'm never go the, back. Assistant. <laughs> you will never go back. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that Craig is here. Hey man, and wow, he we says, miss you buddy, hugs. <laughs> he says you've been around too many fumes. Eh? Uh, thanks craig 
Thanks. Is I appreciate that. that. <laughs> I, I thought that was the painting. <laughs> Not as much as I you, thought it was right? that hot shot paint you used, you my you. friend. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, the, just a quick second for Craig. The last photographs of the mural that uh, you sent, Barb. My friend, hats off to you again for kicking it and knocking it down. Yeah, great mural, Craig. Great mural, Craig. It's so good to be friends with you. Okay, Art R. Uh, how about retinning the tip? Retinning the tip is a is a little bit difficult, but you want to you want to make sure that you just brush it off, turn it up kind of high, melt some solder on it, and then turn it off, and let that solder sit there. What what your the tin that you're using is the tin that's in your solder. It's always easier to tin your soldering iron with sixty forty solder than it is fifty fifty. 60 40 giving you more tin it'll be a little bit easier to tin your iron uh using 60 40. and you just have to i mean if you if you beat up your iron tip don't waste your time spend 13 dollars and get a new tip so yeah definitely yeah. uh back to craig now if you want to see craig's murals go to his facebook page that's craig stevens on facebook he's a very awesome artist and he's the one i think we told did, you this last that did week our sign that did our sign out here in front of conway glass okay so devil debbie appleby uh do you do glass blowing as well we do debbie appleby and thank you for tuning in tonight and thank you for being new to the channel we also blow glass here in conway glass barb and i have been blowing glass together as a team for 20 this is our 26th year barbara really 26 years of blowing glass and you know what all it was was our son invited us up to a, a school and we watched some people blow glass for a couple hours before we went to dinner that night and we were right. you get that glass bug you just have to keep going right and, and any kind of glass y'all we do uh the we like to say we do all the temperatures we do cold glass we do warm glass and we do hot glass all right here in the Conway Glass Studios. And you know what else we do? We do YouTube and we need you to subscribe because we want to hit 5,000 subscribers tonight, everybody. Yeah, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Call your friends. Call your friends. <laughs> Tell them to Please do. Let's hit 5,000 tonight 5, before Barb and I go to dinner. Okay. Um, Magali says that she retins her tip on Sal alone. Men the Salam Salamonia uh, it uh, blocks. blocks, yes. Yeah, you can. that's great. That's yes. a great way to clean your iron back and forth, up and down, du, 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 medium heat. Du, du, du. And now that salmonella, that <laughs> salmonella, <laughs> now the sal ammonia block smokes though. Please make sure that you have uh, your ventilation correct when you start using the sal ammonia block. And it's still a quick. It's boom, a quick boom, fix, right? right? You don't wipe, you don't, yeah, and then wipe it down with a sponge and then put solder on it and your iron, guess what? Is tin. Okay. Uh let's thank see. you, Magali, for, for sharing that yeah, because I for forget sharing. about those sal alimonia locks. We always locks. go with the cheap thing. We always go <laughs> with the paper towels and, <laughs> and a tissue and, and a, a and the sixty forty solder. Okay. Uh let's see. There was something else that came up. I apologize, Ed. I'm looking. That's okay. Oh, good. Debbie, Debbie Appleby. She said that Gail Anastasio had told her about us. Tell Gail we said hi. Yeah, please tell Gail that we said hello. Um, she, yeah. So Gosh, we've known Gail for... We've known Gail forever. Forever. Yeah. So tell her we said hey. Yeah. Uh, do you have any uranium... Dawn wants to know if we have any uranium pieces. Personally, like as, personally, the answer would be yes. Do we have blow glass in the glass blowing studio? The answer to that would be yes, too. It's not, but blown. do we have any pieces made? No, no, we have the glass, but we have uh, we haven't made anything with it. Yet. We have blue blow glass and we have green blow glass. Magali says she has a smoke trap, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good, that little box. Oh my gosh, that thing is awesome. And I, I you know what? Come to think of it, I've got one uh, in the Thank studio too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, Julie uses one of those 
uh, blocks too. Yeah, the sal. And she's used it for ammonia. many years. Yeah, sal we, ammonia block. we have them around here somewhere. I, I'm. Well, when we were teaching classes in person, that's how we uh, we kept the irons clean. It was a good way to, for the students to understand how to keep your iron uh, physically fit for doing what you need to do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's really a good thing, and um, but again, you have to have the correct ventilation in your studio. You know, there's two things that go in your studio when you build it that go in first. Mm -hmm. First thing, Barbara, is your stereo because you got to have music. Definitely. And the second thing is your ventilation. Ventilation. And everything else comes. After and then that. when you start making money, you get air conditioning. Then you get and air heat. <laughs> You know, I don't know how many couples. Put that of in the budget. We've had that. Uh, started out with, started no, air out with no air or heat. I know. Okay. At least this one has a little bit more air conditioning. Well, this one, you see, Barb's got her jacket on tonight because it's the air, air is air right, right above us. And it's blowing down the back of my shirt. Oh, Dawn started collecting uh, uranium glass and she okay. would like to have a pumpkin. Okay, now. Well, you know what? Keep those thoughts because when we start blowing glass again in October, just shoot it back to us. Yeah. Because we, we've had that glow glass in the color in the color drawer for 25 years yeah we haven't <laughs> we haven't used it but really it does work it. we have blue and green well, it's got uranium in it we're like do we really want to use it I but don't know. we also have a nice little <laughs> collection of uh, uranium glass uh, at the house at the house uh, i had and some of you may be new to the channel ask about the cardinal pattern Where's the cardinal pattern? Where's the putty recipe? That those that kind of things and the kayak pattern are on the Conway Glass website on the tools and patterns page. So go to the conwayglass.com and then click on the tools and pattern page and there you have it. Yeah. So that's uh that's the conwayglass.com oh, and there's that and sign there's Craig. Craig's Craig painted that sign right there. <laughs> so yeah, you do that. And um, that's where those things are if you need those. And there'll things. be more patterns coming up soon. I'm working on them right now. And these are all original sun catcher patterns from Ed and Barb. And we'll get them posted up on the page so that you can have access to them. And uh... okay, let me see if I am. I have to remind myself my shed is not a soundproof and my neighbors don't like to hear my renditions of my favorites. Yeah, I know that can be a problem. Or when they start singing to your music that you're playing, your yeah. neighbors do. I've had that happen. I know. Have the music up loud. <laughs> and the guys that cut the grass are out there just jamming and dancing. And dancing and everything else. It's kind of funny. I'm like, Barb, I'm, I'm afraid you can't be playing that music outside. Okay. Uh were you going to show us how to get zinc frame all cleaned up? Yeah, that's, do we, did we show that? I thought we showed that. I last showed week. that last week. I showed you the tool. Uh, it's in, look, check out, go back and watch last week's live because I showed you the drill that I used with the quarter inch shank and the wire bristle brush. That's how you clean up uh, zinc. Or you can use steel wool as well. So if you're using, if you got, if you got big pieces of it, use steel wool. If you're just cleaning up joints, then use my method with the brush and the drill. I, I, we've got that in a video, and um, yeah, because I'll you, try to find that. You always, uh, even your lead it's or your copper video. foil will oxidize. You can't use that brush on copper foil, but your lead will oxidize as well. If you don't, my best word to you when you're building a window is cover that window up every evening when you leave because just the dust from the air will get down on that the humidity and moisture will oxidize that lead and the zinc almost overnight so okay so we yeah we were talking about zinc and you're talking about the outside frame of zinc the outside like for a frame no, you, it, if, you're gonna, if you've got to clean it up, it's oxidized. What you need to use is either steel wool or some sort of a brush, like we, you know, like we showed you yeah. in the video. We don't okay. use a lot of zinc, and I don't definitely don't use it for framing. 
and uh, and definitely don't use zinc indoors. So. Oh, Led Zeppelin in the background. Okay. That's good. <laughs> That'll get your neighbors <laughs> rocking. Yeah. Um, okay, Magali was asking about the patina on the zinc too. Did we talk about patina on zinc? Well, when again, once you clean it, zinc will is spotty. Naturally. Okay. Naturally. And so a lot of people, what they do with zinc, if they're going to use it on the outside of a frame, is before they even put it on the around the windows, they, they clean it, wipe it down with lacquer thinner, and they spray paint it. I, you know, zinc is a lot of work for really, to me, it's easier to put a frame around it or put a lead rope frame around it. Do something. If you got to, if you got to work on your border lead for an hour just to get it cleaned up where you feel like it's going to look good, I wouldn't even use it. If it's that oxidized, you know, to. Yeah, but you don't. Oh, and they're using that for a frame yeah. that people see. Yeah. I that's... my personal opinion is that 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 zinc should be after you get it all put together that that frame should be painted. To me, that looks the best. Whether you yeah. paint it a a nice gray color or more to the black gray look, I think that's going to give you the nicest look because well, you can try to fix it and try to patina it, yeah. but it's not gonna. It's not gonna. Um, it's not gonna. It's not gonna do that. I'm afraid it's probably not gonna look the way you want it to look. So clean it up with steel wool, get it nice and shiny, and if you want to patina the whole thing dark black, then you're you're gonna have to tin the whole thing. Yeah, with you could solder. do it that way. You solder is thirty two dollars a pound now, y'all. I'm not yeah. sure how much zinc you want to. You want a tin. It's okay that you I, frame in zinc, Magali. Yeah, I'm no, not it's good. It I just don't yeah. I just don't do it. It's not it's personal preference, y'all. I I don't do it, but that's the way our business is. It's what we do. It's how we build a lot of big windows and stuff. And they zinc does just doesn't allow itself for that type of work. That's all. It's personal preference. It's nothing against anybody that uses zinc. I promise you. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, Christy says that she can also she has also used super blue for gun blue. Well, you know what? I and know it it, it 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 shows your fingerprints on plastic bags if you kill somebody. So yes, it probably does work, Christy. I had no idea. What does that have to do with? Uh... I don't know. That's what they use. That's what they use on CSI to find oh, your God, fingerprint. you've been watching too much television. I know, but no, I, okay. and and, and y'all don't don't get me wrong. I just don't use zinc. Okay, matter. I got a fifty pound box of it over here at the that somebody dropped off. Oh, really? And okay. I just don't use it. Okay. Well, maybe Magali can use it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, did you hear that? He's got he's got that stuff. Okay. Uh, Thomas Sharp said he just found 15 pounds of solder. Wow. Wow. Lucky you. Yeah, that's Lucky like 450 $500 worth of solder right now. That's awesome. Okay. James Smallridge would like to know um, our th your thoughts on chasing the iron with the solder versus pushing the iron when the solder, with the solder. Um, I don't push any anything but um my glass cutter when i'm cutting patterns i push that when you're soldering copper foil you should all to me you should always pull it you should always pull your solder because your hand's not in the way because your soldering iron sticks out five or six inches in front of your fingers so pulling that gives you much more control than trying to put i don't i wouldn't even i wouldn't even know how to control pushing a soldering tip pushing it away from me, trying to make a bead that looked uh, good enough to give to a customer. Pulling. Uh, chasing the iron with the solder, yes. Yeah, chasing it. Don't mm -hmm. put, don't push it away from you. And actually yes. you're not, yeah, you're chasing the iron. The solder's behind you. Mm -hmm. Your iron should be turned up on its edge and should be at about probably 35 or 40 degrees. And that so your solder, 
stick should be right in that corner, just almost as if you were welding, almost as if you were welding. Right. But if right. your solder tip is laying flat, you're not going to get a good bead anyway. Turn it up on its end, stick the solder right in that corner mm -hmm. and pull and go and get 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 the right temperature before you start pulling too fast and if you get it if you get it right man you can sing around that window that's right cat saying jane said years down the road zinc will change colors it's almost impossible to stay black this is true it's the nature of the product it's yeah it's the metals itself it's, yeah it's, it's the sure nature. It's, it's but the that, nature. that doesn't mean that the zinc is going bad though no. That just means that you're going to have to finish that frame. So that's why a lot of people paint it. Right. And ar around here in the south on the coast, zinc doesn't just oxidize. It pits. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not good. Right? Okay. So, so that's, paint it. <laughs> that's really not good. No. Uh, especially, you know, things that are that are outside. But it does zinc in the, in the ocean environment and the salt air definitely pits up pretty that's bad. That's probably why we don't use it. We're here in the south and the salt air on the yeah, coast. Yeah, I just don't, you know, I've, I've used zinc on certain projects, but n none of them, you know. Okay. Ray wants to know what we do with our leftover glass. Oh, Ray. We don't, we do not put it in the trash. I can tell no, you that. No, we do not. We have, we, right now we have four rubber made bins full of it we give it to the high school students and art we, classes we or student art classes yeah. who, whoever's doing mosaics right so we give it to them yeah the and if they, the people are doing vacation bible school in the summer with the kids uh, for mosaics we donate glass to them for that so okay so uh does the size of the copper foil matter or is it personal preference well it depends on how much solder you want to use, really. Well, and the size of the solder joints. And that the you side want. of the solder joints that you want, how wide you want them. Because remember, it's not just one side of the glass; it's both sides of the glass. So yeah. it's personal preference. I think so. Yeah. Um, but look at other people's work and just decide how you want yours to work. If you like that thick line, then you would use bigger solder. Right. But, and if you want the, the you know, the, I think the normal is seven thirty second. Mm -hmm. You can go down as small as I would say three sixteenths and quarter is going to be a lot of quarter is going to be a lot of, uh, a little bit more solder. And then you have all your decorative stuff going on. So what about folks doing mosaics and sharing it with us? What about you folks doing mosaics and sharing it with us? What? We don't do mosaics. <laughs> we have done them in oh, the past. Oh, we have in the past, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, if I find my some of my mosaic work in the storage unit, I'll bring it up here and share it with y'all. Yeah. It's probably we'll not probably that. even have one in the yard still somewhere. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, mosaic is good. And we, you know, we have a couple of books on mosaics. We also have, uh, well, that's a great way to use your scrap glass for sure. Right, Mark? She means to share scraps, perhaps. Okay. Yeah, well, scraps are heavy. The problem with them is it's better off to pick hey, them up. Hey, if in you person. guys are in the area and you, and you are scrap. on our YouTube channel, you get in touch with us, go to the website, write us a note, tell us you're going to be around, and we'll give you a couple pounds of. Scrap glass. Oh, scrap glass. Yeah. Just bring a box with you because we don't <laughs> bring have the box boxes. with you. Bring the box yeah, with you. Yeah, we don't have boxes. And make sure to call first so that we're here and that you can get in the studio and you can get some of and that. And we'd be happy to meet glass. you too. So that's awesome. You know. Okay. Yeah. Online classes. Um, yeah, that's what we're we're doing with the video. And what are you talking about? Regular classes from start to finish live? That's a possibility. Um, we are thinking about doing a membership for people that want certain things. Yeah. We'll still do exactly everything we're doing right now. But uh, if we had a membership, we could... Um, possibly do online classes so yeah. we're looking at that 
Yeah, because we had to, we would have to be very specific for that. And then the mem, if we had a membership, then that's you would tune into that, and your membership would cover those free classes for you. Yes. Because yes. you know you can't you can't continue to do things um, without some sort of compensation. Um. But we would be Christy happy to do Christy wanted to that. know if we tried. Patreon. No, I haven't. I've thought about it. I've looked into it. I haven't really been monetizing a whole lot on our page. I'm just trying to help it grow and and try to figure out what you guys need. So uh, if you think that's something that we should look at, we will. Um, mm -hmm. If you think a membership might be something you might want to uh, participate in, I just want to let you guys know that nothing will change. The only thing that there's a couple of things that membership will get you, but it won't change anything that we're doing right now. No, it'll I'm just be extra uh, way for us to bring you more content and uh, maybe private class. Yeah, because um, we were. That's funny because earlier in the uh, this weekend we were talking about private classes, how much to charge for them, and when to do them, and how long. So, okay, so. Um, a couple people are interested in the membership. Um, uh, a lot of people are saving their glass and uh, sharing it. Okay. And uh, several people said they would like membership. But those of you that aren't interested in that, don't That's worry. Fine. We're going to be here. Yeah, we'll, we're we'll be still here be here. And uh, even more than ever, eventually. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. I Even saved more this, than ever. <laughs> and I, I saved this question for last because this person is a brand new person in stained glass. And they are starting stained glass as a hobby and maybe later turning it into a business. Okay. So what is the most basic of things that they need to learn? And I'd like to ask all of you guys what your suggestion would be while ed's talking why don't you think about what's that one thing that you would tell a newbie what is that one thing that is the most um basic thing that they need to learn first to me what is that to me barbara it's learn how to cut glass before you do anything else before you buy another tool before you advance to a grinder, before you buy all the bells and whistles, if you can't cut glass, all that other stuff doesn't matter. That's right. That's right. Practice cutting glass. That's what patience. Patience. Rachel, and, Rochelle said patience. <laughs> <laughs> and cut window Christy, glass to yes. get started. Cut yes. window pane glass to get started. And you know, if you do that, it, it, the window pane glass gives you an abundance of confidence because it's one of the softest glasses that there is. So it's very easy to work with. Learn those properties and then switch over to some scrap glass, opaques, cathedrals, however, and then switch up to some textures. Learn how to cut the glass before you spend a lot of money because glass is not inexpensive any longer. Not yeah. even a little bit inexpensive any longer. So my suggestion is to learn how to cut the glass correctly before you do anything. <laughs> Deborah said, take your time. It's not a race. There you Sadly. go. It's not. And you know what? I, I'm, I honestly, every time I cut a new shape or something in a window, I always, you know, I may break the first one, but when I was breaking that first one, I learned something. So the second one usually comes out. Okay. Uh, Deborah said uh, she's referring students to our page to subscribe. Thank you so oh, much. You. We do we appreciate, appreciate that, that thank very you so much. much. Um, that is awesome. Christy said perfect glass cu cutting. Uh, Rochelle said patience. Ray said practice glass cutting. Um, uh, Thomas said, go to the hardware store and ask them for off cut and cut till you think you know how to cut some more. So just keep cutting. Just keep cutting. Keep cutting. Uh, Deborah said, measure twice, cut once. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she also said, have band-aids on hand. Yeah. Very good. Oh. Yes. Um, what is this? 
I even have a dress shirt on, but look what I got in my pocket. Yes, band-aids in your pocket. Okay. You know what? If you're not bleeding, you're not working. Exactly. Um, A.K. Martinez says she'd like to tell them that, that you can save money when starting out by getting free scrap glass. Actually, huge sheets from the framing shops. They just throw it away. Yeah, because you know what? They have a lot of waste because that glass cutting machine that they use only cuts these small pieces of right. glass and, and you're the limited leftover. to their sizes they come yeah. in 11 by 14 16 by 20 you know so they cut those so off it's not yeah go. if they're going to give them to you go get them that's a good idea go thank them. you for that because yeah. i forgot about frame shops because they do have a, t a lot of waste we're here in a regular glass shop we optimize our glass before we cut well, them in yeah, our head be but because we, we have such large sheets that we work with it's much easier to eliminate our waste um and julie and ray said to watch barbanette's youtube channel if you want to <laughs> learn uh band-aids band-aids uh cutting to fit the pattern um so duct tape <laughs> duct tape, yeah, works, duct tape works pretty good too blood sweat and dna go into every piece that's right and watch Barbanette's videos. That that was a lot of uh, that was good really, advice there. That was good advice. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for that because uh, we had some really good questions. People that are beginning, you know, they just they just need that little help. And the, that advice that you all gave them was some really good stuff there. And there's a lot of mentors on this page tonight. That's so, right. So reach out to anybody on the page if you're having trouble and you want to just talk about something that you're doing, reach out to anybody on the page because I guarantee you everybody there will help. Okay. You. We're having demands for glass chat. Glass chat. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let's do this. And we'll do glass chat, Ed. Can we do glass chat? We can do glass chat. Can we, we just do have that? a couple things okay. to talk about this week? Well, let's let's uh okay. Let me get let me get the right camera here. And we'll go right here. And there you go. Okay. This is the contraption you're gonna show us. This I'm gonna show everybody this right here. Okay. What is it? <laughs> okay. What is it? So I'm going to tell you what this is. You know, in the past, I've told you everybody said, "Oh, hey Ed, what kind of what kind of lead? Whose lead do you use? Who's you know whose stuff?" And I always tell you, I use Cascade Metals. So I want you to know, this is manufactured That's by right. Cascade Metals out of British Columbia in Canada, and they this is a cane bender. So I, I just want to show you, we're not going to go into this really in depth, um, be, but you're going to need it at some point within your career if you're going to be building windows. So, or restoring. Or restoring windows. Now, I, I chose, I, I brought out, uh, this is a brass, this is a brass jacketed lid. I know, right? Brass jacketed lid. So what I want to do, this is a cane bender and it adjusts like this, okay? And in order to get your radius, you, you turn it in just a little bit, okay? And we're going to bend this a little bit and we're going to, we're just going to, as we, as we turn, half a turn, half a turn. Normally it would be. Normally, I would go all the way around the table. It, and it would be attached to the table, but I didn't want to mess up Barb's table here. So we're going to just a half a turn. Now, this is brass, y'all. This is brass. So we're going to do another half a turn. So I want you to see too. It, 
is that even though it's rolling in those wheels right there, look at that. No bends, no crimps, none. If I if I take this and do it by hand, it's going to crimp it. See it? Starting to fold it up right there in that corner. So we don't want to do that. Y'all, this is a cane bender and I'm going to, it's not cheap. It's about probably $275. This one we've had for 30 years. But I also want you to know that they'll be back in production in October. So they will be available. And as soon as they come back up online, we will get them put on our website for you. You can find them on eBay right now and they're just, they're really expensive there. But I want you to know that if you're doing, if you're doing zinc and you want to make everything look nice, get you a cane bender. And y'all, this is probably the best one on the market. And this does zinc, brass, and lead, okay? And it's made by Cascade? Cascade Metals, yeah. It's made by Cascade Metals. So last week, everybody said, hey, we were talking about, we're going to... Um, you want me to change you, cam? No, you're good, because I'm going to show them right here. Oh, okay. I'm going to show them underneath right. of this, right here where my hand is, okay? All right. There's my hand. And there's... Ed. There's a dog. Ed, come on, <laughs> come back, come back. <laughs> so, uh, last week, <clears throat> you said, okay, so uh, do, do you sign your work? And, and if you do, what do you use? The answer is yes, we do sign our work. And we use this little deal right here, okay? And it's called a WEN, W-E-N, electric engraver. And this is the model number 21. This model is no longer available. The 21D model is what's available. And we'll have that put up on our website uh, by the end of the week, next this week. And just keep in mind, this is a great way to not only sign, not only sign your uh, work, but also to engrave your tools because you can't get it off. And this one we've had for about 25 years. So show, take, undo the cord there and show them what that tip looks like so, so that's what you're looking for this is what you're looking for right here it's an engraver it's a metal tool engraver okay there there now they can see the tip if you move back over this it's a metal it's there. a metal tool engraver there you go okay and it vibrates that's all it does it vibrates and you can write cursive with it you can print you can do anything you want with it we even sign we sign our vases or our vessels with this so anyway, this is the tool that we use, okay? This is the tool we use to etch or engrave, sign our names on our work, date it, and also to, uh, hey, if you get a new tool, just go ahead and engrave your tool too, go ahead. Anyway, um, Barb, okay. that's all I got for glass chat tonight, but thank you, Ed. keep in that mind, was, this that was great. cane bender is an awesome piece of equipment for your tool. And they will be um, okay. So, Thank you know, you. everything's kind of a little bit uh, crazy up in uh, in British Columbia. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it's a manufacturing thing. Magali says that Harbor Freight has one and it works fine. Thank you, Magali, because we have no idea. Okay, that's no, awesome. This is the one okay. that I use. So that's why I wanted to show you what I use. We called the yeah, we called about the Cascade and it's not available. So Magali said, Harbor Freight. Thank you. Okay. See? So if there's a cane bender, a small cane bender that you can use, it's at Harbor Freight. That's awesome. Yeah, we don't have one available. Um, you know, we're just trying to help you all out. But this is this is what you need. And um, when it becomes available and we can put it on our website, we will. It'll be there. We had a question about... Um, uh, she said it's not Cascade. Yeah, I figured it wasn't. Yeah, but, but that's it doesn't okay. matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, where is the flux on the website? It's on RDRV Glass Studio page on Conway Glass website. Go on that page, scroll down. It's underneath the questionnaire, I believe. You'll, you'll it scroll is. Down. It's right under the questionnaire, and then there's then there's a page. Then right under the questionnaire are everything that we talk about on our. Uh, so I try to keep that kind of fresh, like what we were talking about. That's where the 
the little engraver will be um, so that I change that weekly relative to what we talk about. Try to keep it. We try to keep fresh. it updated. And Barbara's so good at that, y'all. I want you to just take a moment and give Barbara a big hand because she she does a lot of work to keep this stuff up to date for us. And you know I'm what? I'm only one person. It's, one of those, it's probably up. one of those thankless jobs. But you know, I Thank see you. all of you good out jobs. there and we know that you're thanking Barbara for keeping up with this. And we appreciate any any uh, orders from our website. Any, uh, yeah. we, we have some things that we put on there of that we sell ourselves, but we also test out Amazon products. And right. when we find a product that we can use in our studio, we'll put it on there. Right. And for you beginners, we put a super beginner stained glass kit up there. It's for, it's for those of you that, you know, I don't even worry about learning how to cut glass. I just want to get the big kit and go. So here it is. It's on there for you. Load it up. Okay. Magali wants to see some cool glass. Some cool glass? Magali. Yep. <laughs> He's uh, not prepared for I'm that. I'm not prepared for that. But uh, We had some camera stuff going on. Oh my gosh. Thank yeah. you, Ray. The first 15 minutes before we started. We had None of the camera cameras would work. He got sidetracked. Well, me, it I'm really gonna... stressed him out too because he couldn't do anything. He didn't know what to do. This is a pretty cool piece. I showed you a, a piece of this earlier. This is a Kokomo 70. Okay. It's did, a Kokomo can, can 70. Can you see it up there? You've showed it to him before. Oh, know, no, you I, haven't showed it to him. But I want him to see this. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me change the. Let me change. Ooh, that okay. is pretty. So. Do it again. Well, Put I know. Well, I'm going to share the Where number with you. Okay. That's let okay. it focus. Uh, pull, go back a little bit away from it. There you go. That might be it. Okay. Kokomo they 70. On this side, it's so beautiful. I'm getting a little bit of light behind it from the light over here. Okay. Isn't that gorgeous? So, this is the front side that you cut from. But, Magali, the coolest part about this glass, and you wanted a cool glass, look how cool that is right there. <laughs> They say that flux is not available. Okay. Well, they must have sold out since last night. <laughs> I'll find another one. That it should be able to. I'm but sorry. This is just a, a marbleization of the colors that are mixed when this glass is made. Y'all, what I would do with this glass, and I and I didn't do it in the job that we were working on using it because I couldn't. But with this glass here, I would turn my pattern upside down, and this is what my customer would see if it lent itself to it. This is an absolutely gorgeous glass, and don't forget, it's Kokomo number 70, and it is absolutely beautiful, y'all. Look at that. That's awesome. Is that a cool glass, Magali? Yeah, that she liked it a lot. Uh, as Barbara don't send a note home that I talked to. I'm trying to get back in the stream and it's driving me crazy. Okay, there we go. Hey! All right. Uh, Thomas says the two bottle one is, they're out. Okay, I'll find another link for that, but you should be able to find, do a search and find some Ruby Flux. But yeah, so the one bottle that. is like, the one bottle is like 11 and the two okay. bottles are 19. I think you might be able to find the one bottle. The one itself. bottle, yeah. You might as well just But you're going to love Ruby Flux when you start using it, y'all. Yeah, it is good. Uh, Magali's going to Yakagani on the way up to Canada this summer. Oh, you got to keep us posted, Magali. Please do. And share some of those pictures of that beautiful glass. That sounds like a great trip. Okay, Mr. Streeter. That's is awesome. there any other questions that everybody, uh, it was a great live stream. Thank you guys for coming. S so we many of y'all make, you know what, you guys. Barbara and I look forward to Monday evenings at seven o'clock because yeah. we, we, we just enjoy saying hi to you guys and you guys tuning in and, you know, we can't thank you enough for, for all your support. It's greatly appreciated. It is. And we thank you. And it's free. And it's free. So and don't forget if you're in the wings back there, please subscribe. <laughs> Let's make this a 5,000 subscriber night. And make it happen for us, y'all. Yeah. Call your friends. Just ask them to subscribe. 
They don't even have to watch us. Just call your friends and have them subscribe to the RDRB channel. Ray wants to know what's for dinner. Um, I think I'm going to have a salad, Ray. And Ed, I'm not sure what I'm probably going to have a, a, a salad, uh, a Caesar salad with some blackened grilled chicken on it. Just a little yeah. light because, it, you know, it's so late in the evening. And you have to be careful what you eat once you reach, you know status yeah he has to go to the doctor <laughs> have to go to the doctor on wednesday because <laughs> he's got to get on the scale i think i get released on wednesday ray so okay magali wants to know if they if we've tried stained glass stuff they have an awesome selection no i have not but i will be checking it out thank you stained glass stuff and Julie wanted to know how you are, uh, you got that stained glass stuff? Uh -huh. Julie wants Thanks. to know how you are doing with your recuperation. I'm doing well. Barbara and I, uh, last uh, last week, midweek, we crossed over to the 5,000 step mark on our pedometers. Yep. So I'm up to 5,000 steps a day now and I'm feeling He's feeling great. great. I can't wait to see the doctor and tell him what a great job he did. Okay, so we're going to head out because we're going to go to supper. We only get to go to supper on Monday nights. Every That's other night, y'all, I promise out. you, we cook at home. <laughs> we cook Sometimes at home. Sometimes we go home and cook dinner, but we didn't cook anything in advance. We like to cook it up on Sunday and then have leftovers, but we didn't do yeah. that yesterday. Yesterday, you know what we did for the first time together in a long time? We worked in our yard, y'all, and it oh was all It was a, just, look, a, it was just a, a wonderful day, day for the two of us. And we had a lot of fun and uh, we got to do something that we hadn't done in a while, which was work in the yard together as a team. Uh, Magali wants to know if we're doing anything new with our blown glass. Yes, Magali, we are. And we can't wait to share it with you guys. Uh, it's kind of soon. Soon. <laughs> soon. We're making plans now. And we don't begin to blow glass until September. But we have a project coming up that has to do with lighting. I will tell you that. And, um, yeah. And, uh, and vintage materials. Yeah. Vintage. Yeah. Vintage, vintage materials and hand blown glass by Edinburgh. Yeah. Okay. So we're really looking forward to that. The wheels are turning y'all. It's like. Yeah. And so hopefully we can get it all. We've got a pretty good inventory here that has to be made available. Should I say? Yeah. Yeah, it feels good to work and in the yard. Golly's going to Canada for the summer, so I guess she she must be going the first week of August, and you'll be coming back the second week of August, my golly. Okay, she, she's not saying, but we'll we'll find out soon enough, right, my golly? Say hello to Annabelle for us. Give her a hug. And um, we will see you guys next week, Monday night, seven o'clock. Y'all have a good week. Happy cutting. Don't forget, please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up because the thumb is our favorite finger. Thanks again, y'all. And don't forget, <laughs> click on the notification bell so you'll know exactly when we're coming back to you, which is next Monday night at 7 p.m. Magali is going to be there from June through July. Oh, my gosh. Thank awesome. you, everyone. We'll see you later. See you Bye -bye. soon.